Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel podcast and video podcast series, where we talk with our guests about experimental, light sport, and ultralight aviation. We are just getting started with this, so if the audio isn't 100% just yet, bear with us. Perfection is coming. Let's jump right into the interview. Thank you to our sponsors, Airworks, Acme Aero, Kit Plane Parts, Edge Performance Engines, and Viking Aircraft Engines. Okay, everybody, welcome to another uh, kind of virtual session here with Zoom. Uh, being that we are social distancing, trying to keep everybody connected in the aviation community as much as possible. And today uh, we are meeting with uh, Vans Aircraft, uh, Greg Hughes out in Oregon. Good morning. How you doing, Matt? Great, great. I have, I have to ask, and not to throw you a curveball question, but Hughes, are, are you any relation at all <laughs> to the great Howard Hughes? <clears throat> no, the, my answer to that for you has been, yeah, I wish. Uh, <laughs> Interesting. The Spruce Goose, which is, of course, the huge uh, uh, flying boat that he built, is actually down in McMinnville. It's about a probably about a forty-five minute drive or a ten-minute flight from from here, where I really and, nice. Uh, and it's uh, if you've never made it to McMinnville or to the Portland area, then <clears throat> especially if you're an experimental type person, you know there's a, a lot of aviation related stuff in Oregon, especially in this part of Oregon. So. You know, we encourage people to when they come by vans, maybe do the tour and run down to McMinnville and don't miss taking in the Evergreen, Evergreen uh, Museum down there. It's really, really cool. Awesome. We'll have to check that out next time. I, I did visit vans years ago. I want to say it was probably, mm -hmm. gosh, 15, 15 to 20 years ago, a long time ago. Yeah. But yeah. Pretty, pretty impressive place. So I wanted to, to get with you today. Uh, unfortunately, Sound Fun, you know, was moved and now it's officially canceled. There's a lot right. of manufacturers, vendors that didn't make it up down to Florida and, uh, you know, would have had a chance to talk to us, the public, what's going on there. So I just wanted to ask, you know, what's new for Vans Aircraft in 2020? Wow. Um, you know, we have a lot going on. Um, certainly, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a good time for experimental aviation. I think across the board, industry-wise, you know, we saw that uh, 2019 business was up and it was up the year before. Um, and so that's a good thing. Uh, we've uh, we've got uh, a lot of, of course, ongoing maintenance of our fleet, a lot of projects going on. Um, a lot of what we've been working on has been uh, uh, enhancing the abilities that we have in our factory uh, to be able to new, do new and different things. Uh, also, of course, working on you know aircraft designs, aircraft updates, um, really a whole lot going on. Uh, the sun and fun not happening is just really unfortunate. You know, we're in a completely totally unusual uh, new sort of operating model in the world right now. And as a result of, uh, you know, this, this viral pandemic that's going on, we've had to make some adjustments in advance um, in order to be able to cope with that and still make sure that we're able to do business and deliver what our customers need from us and want from us. And so we've been doing that. So that, so that being said, are you guys still pushing kits out and just running like, like a skeleton crew oh, yeah. right at the moment or? So what we've done <clears throat> is, I, you know, we, the, our top priority is the safety of our, the Vans family, right? Or the, which, which is really our employees, but also our customers. So we've made some changes. Um, we, uh, we're, we've, we're kind of a, um, I won't say old school technology company. We have a lot of really modern technology, but, um, we didn't have work at home capability, for example, especially from a telephony perspective. So, and, uh, we're a very, we do a lot of customer interaction on the phone. Um, so we had to make some changes there in a, a quick project, but we were able to get, we have, you know, a good, almost half of our staff, probably half of our total staff working from home. Uh, and the remainder of the staff works in the factory and the warehouse. And so we're doing, you know, a whole bunch of uh, different uh, cleaning and uh, distancing uh, type of changes in order to make sure that people can, that are able to come to work can do that. In Oregon, uh, the governor's um, order said that uh, there were certain kinds of businesses that had to shut down, right? The, the obvious ones, right? Like restaurants can only make it, well, restaurants can actually do carry out service, but you know, things like haircuts and stuff where people are just have to be close to each other to be able to do whatever the business does for our type of business. You, you uh, implemented a drive through kit pickup. Well, kind of <laughs> what we did was we, not quite, not quite that cool. Uh, what we did was we had to, um, we had to, 
we're allowed to continue to operate as long as anyone who can work from home does work from home and anyone who is left in the facility in the factory and office um, uh, can can properly you know be spread apart from each other and things can be cleaned and, and what have you and so we put a program in place to to do that and we're, we're, so back to your real question um, we're still making parts we're still packing kits uh, in fact lots of them uh, business has been very strong and and that's a good thing and um, one thing we've noticed is that as this has been going on the last few weeks uh, it's become pretty apparent that a lot of people that are either building RVs or have thought about building RVs um, are making progress in their work or and or their decisions and you know our parts orders are certainly very busy and kit orders are busy and we're shipping so good good uh, to hear yeah. that people are at home yeah. they have to do something right might as well get their kit together yeah yeah it's um um you know the one thing everybody talks about is how they get kind of stir crazy and i mean what better way to socially distance you know than going to your hangar and and spending time working on on the project that you love so much and and focusing your energy and your time there you know so so it, it's uh, unintentionally created a, a bit of an opportunity for people to be able to do that and sort of stay responsible and stay healthy and, and, um, and have something they enjoy doing. Sure. Sure. So just uh, kind of like a review, I mean, Vans aircraft has been around forever. I mean, since I was before I was born, I think. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> not, people, not before I was born, but close. <laughs> <laughs> people should yeah. know the name as a household name for, for now, but, uh, maybe not. Um, so what models are currently in, in production? Like I know I, I started out on a couple different kits back in the day, the RV six and looking right. on your, your, your timetable there. Um, you still support that platform, but it's no longer available as a, as a kit. I understand. Correct. No, no longer available to start. Right. So you yeah. still get a finished kit, for example, for an RV six, but the current, so the current airplanes, a pretty long list actually of airplanes that are, that you could currently start and build are the RV three, four, um, the six, is no longer it was replaced by the seven um, about 20 years ago or so a little more uh, and then there's the rb8 uh, which is a, the seven and the seven a so in in rv speak uh the a model if there's an a model that's the tricycle gear whereas the non-a model is the conventional gear or the, or the tail dragger so the rb7 is a tail dragger and the seven a is the tricycle version of the same airplane then we have the rb8 and the 8a nine and the nine a and then we have the rb10 uh, which is the four seater, the RV 12, which is now the RV 12 IS, which is an updated version of the RV 12, and it's the light sport airplane, uh, and then the RV 14 and 14A. So the RV the RV one is in the museum at Oshkosh, and it was a, a Stitz Playboy that was adapted and changed uh, by Dick Van Grensman. Um, and then uh, the RV two is a whole different design that that never flew. To talk about that in a minute, if you want to. Uh, the RV uh, three we talked about, right? The RV five is actually an airplane, which uh, we did some videos, and they're on our Facebook page and Instagram and stuff here and there from last year. Um, and it hasn't quite flown yet, but it's going to fly again. It's a single seat, very unusual and unusual looking airplane. So, and we didn't do an RV thirteen because you know thirteen. So, so <laughs> yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah. Uh, so, what is the real difference? Um, RV fourteen being the the newest kit available. And it looks very right. similar to the seven or the nine. So what, what is the real differences between those different platforms? So I would say that the 14 is cl probably closer to the seven than the nine. The 14 is an aerobatic airplane as the RV seven is. Um, the RV nine is not. So okay. the wing on the RV nine is all about, it's a very thick, long wing. Uh, it's all about going up high, uh, cruising fast on, on a, at a high efficiency is what it's about. So it's a cross country airplane, great airplane. Um, the seven, um, is for some people um, who have maybe very broad shoulders or broad other, you know, midsections, uh, might have a little bit of a difficult time squeezing into a seven. Uh, the 14 is really sized so that it's wider, a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. Um, it shares a lot of parts, actually, especially wing parts in common with the RV-10. So the way that I explain it somewhat unconventionally is an RV-7 and an RV-10 had a baby. Um, it would grow up to be an RV-14, which is really, really kind of what it is, right? I mean, it's okay. um, if you think of the RV-7 sized at RV-10 size, a mm. two-seater, it's really what you get with the RV-14. It uses an IO-390 as the typical power plant, um, and uh, uh, it's a nice airplane. It's a real nice airplane. So it, I think of the uh, 
Go ahead. So it shares the wing of the 10? And- it shares the wing, the wing of the 10 and many of the exact same part numbers. It's not as long as an RB10 wing. Right. A little okay. bit shorter. Okay. But it does share, it shares the same wing structure and components. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for clarifying for that. Um, yeah. So as far as the kits go, uh, you know, you, you guys have uh, kind of pioneered some of the technology m- moving into uh, the, the kit industry and as it's come available. So what is it currently? Is it, is it match hole and then you still have to drill out to final size or is it, cur- is it now a final size hole kit or where do you stand? No, it's now, it's now match, matched hole uh, and final size. So, okay. um, so our kits have gone through some evolution. Um, if you go back to the very beginning, um, it was literally uh, hand-drawn paper plans and uh, metal uh, and start from there and fabricate, right? Uh, you fabricated an uh, enormous amount of the airplane as you were going with an original RB3, for example. Um, uh, and pretty much through the RB6, um, although the RB6 went through some evolution in the early 90s, right? Late 80s, early 90s, and started getting some pre-punched skins that actually had holes in them. Uh, you know, but but you're not, when you get to the to the 7, the 8 and the 7 came out in a little bit of an odd order there. But, um, you know, you started having parts that are pre-formed, so that are hydroformed and, you know, they're wrapped around. You don't have to build your own forms and get out a hammer and start knocking the flanges around for the ribs, for example. Um, so I think of the first, the first, uh, uh, phase of RD kits is, is sort of the, the, uh, the fabrication phase. Um, the current phase I think of is, um, and if we're being honest, it's much more assembly than it is, than it is creation of parts. Right. So, and then the phase in between, which would be the seven, eight, nine, to a certain extent, the 10, but not so much. Um, you know, that's sort of the in-between phase where it's a little bit of a hybrid. Um, you know, you're going to do some fabrication. A lot of the parts are made, but you might be doing match drilling and you are final sizing the holes. But in the current kits, especially 12 and 14, um, it's for the most part matched hole final size. goes together pretty quickly. There's people that build, um, you know, I know a guy that built an RV4 and it took him 17 and a half years. And then I know somebody that just finished a few people that have just finished army 14s recently that have done it anywhere from just under a year to a year and a half or so. And it's also, you know, for people that are sort of doing on a more of a, uh, uh, after work pace, you know, they might be doing it in a couple of few years where sure. uh, you just, sure. you didn't hear about that before. So. so is there a plan to, I mean, being the, the 14 is the newest to the newest technology you've applied as you've engineered it you know, already the, the CAD CAM software, whatever you use to make it the final match right. hold and final, uh, you plan on going back and kind of retro to bring everything else forward or just that kit is what it is. And most, most like in most cases, most likely the, the older kits are what they are. Okay. Um, I know that people would love for us to go back and completely retrofit all of the kits. Um, but, um, a lot of it's really, yeah. well, and it's not that simple. And as the tools change, you can't just take new tools and apply them to old designs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you would effectively have to redesign from the ground up in order to do that. So most of the work that we do is in solid works as our, uh, 3d modeling tool. And that's, we have a lot of great, a lot of great capabilities in that tool from both from design to, um, you know, making changes makes it really nice. Um, and you know, in the recent years, uh, taking on, uh, FEA finite element analysis um, type of studies that you can do with that, um, which are just amazing in terms of what you can do in terms of stresses and uh, strains on a structure and seeing, seeing where, how parts interact with each other under load and whatnot. Um, relatively new technology that, that we've adopted that's, that's been really, really great. Um, but most of the energy that we put into um, leveraging the new tools is going to be in uh, updating current designs where where we need to make a change um enhancing current designs which is what we did with the rb12 and doing the 12 is where we had the fuel injected edge capability in the new cockpit the new fuselage kit sure um and then <clears throat> certainly rb14 is is all modeled that way and you know in future airplanes but, but we'll really we'll mostly apply new net new stuff uh in in either very, very current and or future airplane models. Okay. I appreciate you clarifying that for me. I was just curious of that because, yeah, I mean, it's been around for a long time and, and coming from more of a mechanical side myself, I understand there's a lot of work involved and in get to that point. So, so 
You know, um, and we're not a large company. We we have a total of almost 80 people uh, in the entire company, right? That's factory, front office, taking orders, doing tech support, management, um, and our engineering receiving. team. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah, crating. Um, a whole bunch of really awesome people that I feel really privileged to have the opportunity to work with. Um, they do a great job, and they're very passionate. We're all very passionate about what we do. Our engineering team is... You know, we don't, we don't have a great big engineering team that can, you know, where you can assign five people to, you know, a part. Um, when, when one of our engineers takes on a project, uh, they're the project manager, right? And they're the lead uh, and they're the primary designer. And then, you know, if it's, there's probably going to be another engineer that's sort of their, their uh, QC process will, or their peer, peer review process. Sure. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty holistic. It's one of the cool things about working at a company like Vans Aircraft. You know, I've worked at really big Fortune 500 companies before. Um, but, you know, when you work at Vans and other companies in the industry that are similarly sized, you really get to own things from beginning to end. Um, and, you know, that's part of what makes it really appealing to, to people that like to really like sure, to dig yeah. in and get, get hands on. Yeah, if you, you take ownership of a project or a thing, you, there's a lot, there's a lot more pride that goes into it, I think, and responsibility. Yeah. But uh, well, the same hands-on appeal that goes along with you know building an experimental airplane, you know, in one of the kits, is uh, is the very similar appeal that goes into the the engineers that that want to come and work here um, and do really cool stuff, but they get to be hands-on and uh, get to see get to see the whole thing. Sure. Tell me about um, the quick build option. Um, I think years ago, it, maybe it still is this way. It was it was uh, done across the pond. Are, are you guys doing that there locally now, or is it still done across? No. The pond? So quick quick build kits are still done in the Philippines. Um, the and and there's a team of folks there. It's a it's a it's a separate company, but it's a, they pretty much exist to, in for the process of doing quick builds. Uh, for the purpose us. of their existence. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and they do a lot of them. So, you know, I mean, there was, uh, you know, a, there's a lot of aviation, especially aviation construction talent in the Philippines, right? Um, you know, there's used to be a lot of, uh, I think, U.S. military uh, work that was done there. And, and, and uh, you know, when all the base closures that happened, and a lot of changes that took place in the military, you know, what, 15, 20 years ago, um, opportunities created for new jobs and industry. And, and so we have a, a terrific partnership where um, we make all of the parts in Oregon. Um, everything is everything comes from the factory in Oregon. Um, and then we crate them up into big crates of mass parts. And we ship them over uh, on a boat. And then when they come back, they come back as partially completed aircraft. And uh, we take them and put them through our QC process and validate that everything is good to go and ready to go. Um, if you've seen videos of our pictures of our warehouse where all the quick build stuff is you know we yeah. have racks that are three or four uh racks tall of just quick build stuff um, lots of and, lots of boats lots of boats standing vertically yeah yeah, yeah the, the canoes that the i call canoe, the canoe yeah yeah, yeah. And so it, it um uh and we take we take those we do the qc we ship them back out to somebody in fact if you lived in the philippines and you ordered a quick build from us uh, we would make the parts in Oregon. We'd ship them to the Philippines. They would come back to Oregon. We'd go through the QC. We'd create it up and we'd ship it to you in the Philippines. So yeah, full, full control of the quality control. Right. It's a very standardized process. You know, there's there's really uh, um, uh, very intentionally a, a, a relatively complex set of standards that goes into everything that we do. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's part of what makes our consistency work really well. So that, uh, yeah, you take, you, you mentioned earlier, match toll, final size, and sort of the evolution of kits. If you have an RV three that was made, you know, back in the eighties or what have you, um, or, or even earlier or whatever, um, and you need to replace a part on it. Um, there's quite a bit of manual work that goes into fabrication and replacing that part. If you had an RV 12 or a 14 or a seven or an eight skin or something like that, you need to replace on a wing. Uh, we can punch one out on our, on our uh, CNC punch presses, uh, we can take it off the shelf and ship it to you and it'll fit. Um, it's, you know, the, I've, I've taken, I, I have a RB 12 that I take care of, uh, and maintain and do sort of manage for one of the, for team flight, one of the STEM programs, uh, the first one that we did here in Oregon. Nice. And, um, and it, 
uh, you know, that airplane, a lot of kids around it and goes to a lot of air shows on display and stuff. And, you know, stable leader cores get beat up and several times I've taken parts off there and, and literally pop those rivets out, uh, pop rivets, drill them out, get them out of there. And then, uh, take that, that skin that costs $19 or something like that and pop it on the corner and rivet it on. And it fits exactly every time because it's, we, it's a very repeatable process. Sure. Sure. Well, tell me uh, a little bit uh, about yourself and how long you've been managing there and when, when officially did uh, Vans kind of step down and how is he still involved in the company? Well, Van, Van's still involved um, pretty regularly and he's um, uh, still, you know, chairman of the board, so to speak. He's on the board um, and he still, you know, does engineering work. Uh, he's in the office several times a week, often. Um, not right now with the, with the viral sure. pandemic, you know, he's, yeah, yeah. he's staying at home, but he's, he's doing work at home. And uh, so um, the van hasn't been uh, thinking of it as president running the day-to-day operations of the company for I think over 12, 20 years. Um, I've, I've been here for about two years, right yeah. out two years, just about right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm the new guy. Um, and I was brought on to do media and uh, sort of or external facing things really is what it was about. New website, we're working on a new store, online store, um, things like that. But Van, Van is uh, still pretty deeply involved. One thing that we um, is relatively new uh, and started even, we started doing even since I arrived at the company in the same time frame uh, was the RV-12 SLSA airplanes, which is a certified airplane that can be flown, you know, by flight schools and what have you. So we build and we finish the airplane. It's painted, it's tested, flight tested, and ready to fly away. Okay. We build those at Vans Aircraft now. So there was a another company, Synergy, that was building them for some time for us, but that transition took place. Synergy Air is, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with, yep. is a company that, that does build or assist. Um, and their build or assist has, had just taken off, and it was a a huge industry for them and a real opportunity. And so um, it, there came a time when it just made sense. Uh, Vans was ready to be building the SLSAs um, from a uh, capability and a room perspective. And Synergy was, you know, really open to and, and focusing energy on uh, doing builder assist and doing it really, really well. Opened another, they were here in Oregon and Eugene. They still are. They've opened another facility just south of Atlanta, right? Noonan, in, uh, I think, yeah. Right. And they're just, they're doing, they're just going gangbusters and, and helping people that want to build our airplanes um, who maybe wouldn't have started or approached it originally, but now we're doing so um, because of the opportunity to get some additional education, a little bit of assistance in a facility to build it in. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious because, you know, you still see him out here and there um, at some of the shows and all that. And then like, oh, yeah. through the news, they kind of, you know, step down or whatnot. So, He's still very, very much involved. Good, good to know. No, he certainly has not stepped down. Not, not even remotely. Okay. Um, still, still very involved. Uh, still, still involved in design discussions and, um, and what have you. Uh, but, you know, there's a there's a larger team that's that's uh, doing all of those things now. Um, but, but he's definitely still very deeply involved. Um, and, you know, Vans Aircraft is an employee-owned company, so it's a, like an employee stock ownership program. Okay. Uh, type of setup. And so, uh, you know, Van and others at the company, you know, their, their investment of their time is an investment in the company and, you know, there's a paycheck that comes out of it as well. But, um, you know, the, um, Van made the decision some time ago to, to set that up for people to work at the company. And it's, uh, I gotta tell you, it's a pretty cool place to work. I would imagine, um, I would imagine so. You know, my, my aviation career isn't that many years old, right. You know, started in the two thousands with, actually getting involved in aviation and then uh, got my private pilot license in uh, 2000 and early 2008. So, so I'm still relatively new to it. Um, but being in, uh, in RV country in Oregon, right around Portland, you know, started to see all these really cool airplanes and then got asked to get involved in team flight. Um, had an opportunity to meet Van because chapter EA chapter 105 is, chapter that I was a member of and Van's a member of and his brothers. Uh, so that's how I met him. Um, so, and now uh, I get to go to work uh, and the company he founded, I, I, I left a career in cybersecurity actually. Oh, wow. And decided, decided to make this change. And um, uh, it's been really cool. It's neat, to, it's neat to get to go to work and, 
you know, if you have a question, you can ask man. <laughs> it's kind of, it's pretty good, you know? And if it's, and, and if he doesn't know the answer, then somebody else nearby does. Right. So. Right. Uh, right. It's, what it's what would cool. you say is, um, I mean, I know Vans is, is very popular across the board, but what are the, the yeah. most popular models at this moment um, for you guys? So, so right now the, the um, it, it changes, it varies over time. Um, so the most popular over time, the one that we have sold the most of, uh, or I should say the, certainly the one where the most have flown um, done a first flight is the RV six. Okay. Um, and that uh, the RV seven, very popular right now. The top sellers are the RV 14 and the RV 10 are the, are the, the ones where we're selling the most kits. Okay. Um, and, and I believe right now, although it, it does vary, um, I believe the 14 is probably the, the top seller, although we've seen an awful lot of RV seven kit sales lately. Right. That's, so that's pretty uh, interesting actually. Cause those are, two kind of different opposite ends of the spectrum aircraft, if you will. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, one's fully light sport. That was a four seater. Right. So. Yeah. Well, the RV 12, the RV 12 is a light sport, right? So the 14 is the, is the Bubba RV seven, if you will. It's the big, it's the big airplane. Um, and um, you know, the thing about the 14 is that it's matched hole final size uh, and there's very little fabrication involved and the plans, the plans for the 10, 12 and 14, especially are very much step by step by step. Okay. So it's drawings on the same pages, step one, step two, step three, follow these steps. You will eventually have an airplane, right? That's gotcha. the way that works. Um, and you know, that, that style of plans, uh, appeals to, you know, certain builders that are interested in being able to do that, you know, follow, a uh, prescriptive set of instructions that are quite detailed. Uh, follow the instructions, you end up with an airplane. People start sure. questions along the way. We provide support on it, um, but uh, the level of detail in for those particular models is quite a bit higher than you would have had in like an Army Seven or Army Eight, or certainly anything before that, from a plant's perspective. And in the engine models, real quickly, that uh, basically are are built around this airframe, or essentially the Rotax and either a Lycoming or Continental, or primarily Lycoming, with the legacy style of, in, of engines. Right. So we have one airplane where the Rotax applies, and that's the RV12, the light sport okay. airplane. That's that one, and and it's either the RV12, I'm sorry, the Rotax 912 uh, ULS, which is the carbureted engine, or the 912 not Rotax 912 IS sport engine which is their fuel injected uh ecu or like they call it ecu it's like a fadec type of system single single lever throttle lever no no mixture no choke like you you have a choke on the on the ulis engine sure. um so the the rv12 is uh, the original rv12 was the carbureted engine the rv12 is can take either one um there's been very very few uh, only a couple people could have, that have put the carbureted engine on it so the, the is sport the, or the 912 IS Sport is the engine that's being sold there. On the RV14, um, the, the newest model uh, is really built uh, around the sweet spot is the uh, uh, Lycoming um, IO390. Okay. Uh, you can do an o th O390 also, but a 390, right? And that's the 390A is the one that's that's uh, been sold for that. On the RV10, it's it's a six cylinder, right? So it's a, it's a 540. Um, and then on the on the earlier models, the the RV nine is really sweet spot is around a three twenty, so one hundred and sixty horsepower, one hundred and fifty horsepower. Okay. Whereas the the seven and eight are are uh, people have put lots of different engines on there. You can go as small as a three twenty or as large as an angle valve three sixty. Um, that's what it's intended for. So so a variety of different engines um, that are available. Okay. And the nine was kind of built around the possibility of using a smaller engine, like out of a, somebody was, was a builder you know, out of a 152 or something, right? I know 235 is the small engine you could put it in that. Probably a 235 would be about the smallest you'd want to put in there. The, 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 the common doing engine that? that people, <laughs> there's been a few, there's okay. been a few, a lot of people put IO 320s in them. Okay. Um, that's pretty common. The 320 is, is the, the most common engine to go into a nine or a nine a gotcha the nine by the way the nine a the tricycle gear version is the most common version built the nine is what i would call the unicorn of the of the uh rv fleet right you know you don't see them very often uh, but when you do you're like oh there's a tail dragger nine cool you know so nice. um, there's there's several out there but most most of them are nine a's 
Uh, so the other thing I wanted to ask, you know, during these very unique times, you know, how can uh, people stay engaged in aviation and especially with the Vans aircraft uh, yeah. during this time? Well, it's been interesting. It's been kind of fun and interesting to watch. I mean, it's, it's been kind of frustrating to make it all happen too, but um, uh, so the one thing we've seen is there's a lot of builders who are posting pictures of working on airplanes with their kids. Hmm. That's kind of cool, right? Um, you know, if you're going to be, if you're stuck in the same room at home, then I guess you might as well be stuck in the same room in the hangar, you know, right, air, right. Protection, air, air protection if you're doing noisy stuff, you know, and, and eye protection. But, but another thing is, um, you know, uh, Vans Air Force has seen the, uh, Doug Reeves runs a, a forum site called Vans Air Force, right? And uh, so it's run separate from us, but it's a place where the Vans community comes together and just chats about things and talks about things. And I know that, uh, I called Doug the other day just to see how he was doing because I hadn't talked to him for a while. And he said, oh, I'm you know, doing all right, just trying to figure this out. But he said that, you know, traffic in the mornings, especially on Vans Air Force, was just three or four times what it usually is because mm. people have time and they're doing their research and they're they're finding ways to keep themselves and get themselves engaged. Um, we have a, <clears throat> interestingly, you know, AOPA does uh, their regional fly-ins now. In, uh, in Tullahoma, Tennessee last year, uh, we were at that fly-in. I think I was down there. Took a 14A down there, the East Coast 14A. Spent a few days down there uh, and met met a family, met a whole bunch of people uh, crawling all over the 14A and checking it out. But one family that that was there and checked it out is from Auburn. Uh, and uh, um, uh, dad's name is Glenn and son's name was Hudson. And uh, I have a picture of them sitting in the airplane. Um, but... Yeah, I think Hudson's just uh, all over RVs now, and you know they're trying to decide do we want to build a seven or a fourteen. And um, but we started another thing I've done is we started this thing called the Vans Aircraft Sticker Department. So okay. send a self-addressed stamped envelope to to Vans Aircraft Sticker Department. <clears throat> uh, I can give you the address. You can put it up if you want. One four four zero one Kyle Road Northeast or Oregon nine seven zero zero two. So you send one, then I I drop some here. Let me fly it. Hang on one second here. So. So here we go. This is the Vans Aircraft Sticker Department right here. Okay. Uh, you can see this is one day's worth. There's another stack about five times the size of this over there for me to put stickers in. And then, um, so this is what I'm doing. Stickers. <laughs> um, but one of the cool things is Hudson, this kid, um, he, he sent for some stickers and sent some back. And um, his dad ordered a, a light box sign kit, which is a new kit that we started last year. Um, where you can build a sign that has LED lights in it, you know, Vans Orange, and it has the yeah, Vans logo I've, on the I've got one sitting behind me that I'm scheduled oh, right. to put together here very, very soon, yeah. Looking, I'm looking forward to seeing that. That'll be cool. Um, me too. And so, but but Hudson built the sign last week, and then I found out that he's, print, this kid, he's printing 3D uh, plastic, 3D printer parts because his mom's a nurse and his dad's a pharmacist and his mom, they're wearing those masks and their ears are getting all sore and red. So he built this strap that goes across the back and you can take the elastic bands and hook it on there. So it doesn't go around your ears. Cool. Like a retention strap and things. And so, you know, I posted that on Vans Air Force and now there's a whole bunch of people from the Vans community that are printing out RV stuff. And uh, there's different ways that people are getting involved. Um, certainly well, seen a lot of examples of people teaching their kids, you know, how to rivet guns work and, yeah, I mean, get them, get them started young. It's pretty so, yeah, so entry, absolutely. absolute like ground level entry uh, into, <clears throat> you've got these sign kits now, these right. light boxes. And then yep. can you order a, a rudder kit to start on the baby scale of building things? Or is it usually just the whole tail section? So we, we sell the tail kit, right? Or an amp, an empanage kit, depending on, uh, if it's called a tail kit, it includes the tail cone. If it's called an empanage kit, it's just the tail feathers, right? Okay. So horizontal and vertical. Um, but, but we do have a, we have a few practice and learning kits. So we have, we have the light box sign. We have a toolbox that you can build. I mean, that's a good practical thing to build. And then there's also a mini airfoil section, which is, I believe it's part of a section off of a, uh, uh, aileron. And, uh, and that's, that's buildable. Um, and we even have another one that we call OP 51, which is just a, uh, a small, doesn't really make anything other than practicing fabricating and uh, doing all the different screws and rivets types and nut plates or plate nuts, depending on which side of the country you come from. A fastener practice kit. That's really what it is. You know, it's all about cutting, deburring, you know, edge breaking and, and, uh, and, 
and it's a good opportunity to practice doing things. Um, and for a new builder, it's actually a really good opportunity to practice undoing things is the reason that we did that. In fact, um, starting about three weeks ago, we made the decision and have started putting that little sort of practice kit in every empanage kit or every tail oh. kit that we sell. Nice. So it's in there now. It nice. doesn't take the place of building a toolbox or, or a sign or something like that. But, um, but what it does is it really gives people an opportunity to do things like um, understand how nut plate dumpling works and how to do that. And an opportunity, it's an opportunity to mess it up, right? Yeah. We, everyone who's built an airplane um, and has actually gotten into it and started doing it understands how easy and how often you can mess things up. So, so that'll gain, um, you know, gain some is, confidence to move forward on the project. Yeah. You have permission to destroy this because we can send you a whole new kit for yeah. 10 or 12 bucks or something <laughs> Here's like that. Here's your you sacrificial know, so. kit <laughs> before you get right, into the yeah. non-sacrificial sacrificial kit well what's important to remember is that um and i remind people of fairly regularly is that experimental aviation is is one of the two big fundamentals it's all about education right learning um it's the reason that it exists actually if you look back at the original you know where did experimental aviation come from it's about you know learning and the opportunity to discover new things sure um, and it's part of why it was allowed to exist in the first place and uh, we don't want to lose that, you know, that, that part of things. It's, it's a really cool, anybody can do this. I mean, anybody can do this. Right. Um, and trust me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's what we're trying to do is just try to make it, make it approachable for people. There's a lot of great companies out there, you know, bands and others out there that are doing the same thing. And, um, it's just really cool. And such a great communities of people, right. That, you know, that we can, it is to interact with and um, just really, truly good people. Yeah. Aviation is a, is a great family. Um, yeah. I hope that it continues to, to grow because every, everything was just doing so well uh, and so yeah. healthy, you know, and that's one of the things I, I mean, that's why I, I started this is to keep, keep spreading the word about what's available to you. Um, right. Cause this, yeah. this is a fun hobby and it can be a career. I, I like to get uh, people involved younger and younger too, so that uh, we, you know, we talk about the pilot shortage, but, um, you know, equally right. there's going to be an aircraft mechanic shortage right. to go along with that. So, and this is a right. great place to start, you know, working with dad in the garage, building airplanes, you get the fundamentals of metalworking or fabric right. covering or whatever. Well, and, and the other thing, uh, just to add on to that is, um, this significant growth in aviation STEM programs, STEM science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Yeah. That's what STEM usually stands for. And, well, I have steam, steam, add an A in there and then put arts in there. So, but hands on opportunities to learn, um, usually for kids, right? Although adults get involved and learn a lot too. So team flight is the program that we started it was 12 years ago, um, at Vans aircraft team flight one this airplane that I take care of is, was built in the wood shop at, at Vans aircraft actually, um, uh, by a bunch of kids and Scott McDaniels and, um, and others who led that program. Uh, and made that happen. Scott manages our prototype shop, uh, okay. and maintenance shop at Vance. Um, and then that grew into a couple more team flight airplanes. And then that grew out to um, a number of organizations around the United States and around the world that have taken and adopt, adapted, uh, adopted, adapted, and changed that model um, to work in the schools and to work, you know, through other organizations. Um, but we've shipped. Um, you know, well over 80 RV-12 kits to programs around the world where it's kids that are building the airplane with adult mentors. And you say, you say schools, had, is this high schools or like magnet schools yeah. or what type of schools? Both. So typically high school age um, and both public schools and also some, some magnet schools that are doing that type of thing. But a lot of just public schools where, you know, it's a, it's an opportunity from a vocational trade and training perspective, uh, and, and it's really just, I mean, it's kind of cool, right? You know, what are you doing in school? I'm building an airplane. You're what? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I still get that when I say I'm building an airplane, you know, I'm building an RV8, right? So it's, and it's, I mean, uh, when know, I was in uh, high school, there was an elect option to go for small engine like repair to rebuild like yeah. a lawnmower engine, you know, that, that right. got, you know, uh, removed shortly after that. But I mean, I'd, I'd much right. rather have an aircraft building shop class sure then a llama repair well, we had, not that that isn't cool shop, too but you know exactly yeah we had we had shop class and it was a combination of wood shop and metal shop i think it was i think it was two different i don't know it was junior high 
Yeah. Um, and I know in high school we had shop metal shop, and then we had a we had an automotive, a really great automotive shop facility where I went to high school. Um, we had shop class that. in we had shop class in middle school. I mean, I remember my yeah. teacher. So did we. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he taught safety was, pretty pretty heavy. <laughs> I was welding in a shop class in junior high school. So you know, and that, uh, but you don't uh, kids don't get that same opportunity anymore. But I can tell you, having worked with uh, in team flight and interacted with a whole bunch of these STEM programs um, that are that are building RB twelves, for example, now RB twelve ISs, is, is that um, uh, the kids that are getting involved are learning a lot, and they're not just learning how to use tools hands on. They're learning about why things are built the way they are. They're learning about quality. They're learning about working with other people, mm. right? About teamwork. Yeah. They're learning Lots about leadership. Yeah. yeah. And they're learning from people that have been there and done that. Um, but they're putting their hands on it and really doing it themselves. And so the pride that goes along with doing that and just the, the sense of accomplishment that goes along with doing that, not to mention getting in an airplane and flying in it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's built by the kids. You know, that's a, uh, that's a pretty cool opportunity. It's a, uh, it's pretty unique. And so it's, it's fun to be part of that. Yeah. I'd like to see more of that happen personally. I yeah. think there's a need for that. Get people off of, you know, just looking at a screen, which is the way of the future. We're all going to be online and connected and, you know, working digitally, but yep. we still need to work with our hands. Cause that's, you know, getting some th things done in the mechanical, in the real world of, you know, you still have to have things put together. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Well, Hey, uh, Greg, I really appreciate you your time today and uh, meeting with me online and being able to connect all across the United States. I'm in Florida and you're in Oregon. It's awesome that, yeah. you know, technology we have, that we can have these type of conversations. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been, it's been, been great talking with you. So thank you for joining us here on the experimental aircraft channel for the video podcast and or podcast. These episodes will be available on YouTube as well as all the popular podcast platforms. Thanks for watching or listening. We'll catch you next time.